right now on Full Custom Garage. Master metal man Ian Roussel transforms an old jalopy into a street-burning hot rod. My friend Don has a real steel 1931 Ford. It's a five-window coupe. That's a perfect starting point. But Ian's unorthodox approach doesn't sit well with his traditional client. There's times I sit and go, OK, Ian, what are you thinking about? Because he's picking up the strangest part to put on my car. This is like work, you know? I'm at work here trying to make a really bitching car, but I got to get back to my shop. There's something I've been looking to finish, and I got to get to it. Back at the lab, Ian attempts to resurrect a crazy creation. This car is really kind of the opposite of what Don's is. This is for the street, this is for the show. All it does is get off the trailer, show up at the club, and do its dance. And later at Don's, things start eating up. I'd say a significant event occurred in my absence. <laughs> Hot rods are a purely American thing. They started with early Fords, mostly. 20s and 30s Fords. As I understand, GIs came home from World War II. They wanted to go fast. These were made from cheap cars that were just sitting around, just waiting to be hot rodded. The primary reason these cars were modified was to go fast. The looks just kind of followed the function. Chop Top, for instance, was to streamline the car. These cars had big, tall, square roofs. So uh, the chop top came about from hot rodding. The big draw to these cars is that they're just a blast to drive. They're lightweight, big horsepower. It's just a pretty gnarly experience. These cars are really desirable. They're making fiberglass reproductions, all steel reproductions. So to find an original surviving all metal body, that's the best starting point. Ian and I have been friends for a while. We've worked on several projects together. He gets uh, excited coming over here to see all the projects that I have. I like things a little more simple, and Ian's way more creative. This is like ideal hot rod material. It's a little bit too far gone. We needed to restore it. All the mechanical parts are junk, but for a hot rod, this body is really good. Just as we started this project, I was injured, and I've been laid up for almost a year now. And this has been the best therapy with Ian, as motivated as he is, and me knowing I wanted to finish this project and get it going, that it, the relationship on that worked out really good. Don's wanted to bring this car back to life for years. It's literally, I don't know, 30 years, 40 years sitting around. This car's been in the family for almost 50 years now. Um, it needed to do something with it. It was just a cool car. I love this car. It's really old. It's not rotten. It's just it's been through some stuff. It's an old car. Got crunched in on the side. The frame is toast, but the body is totally usable. It had been heavily damaged in a uh, accident when it was in, uh, in storage. And um, that kind of took the wind out of the sails on putting it back to original. And that's when we truly decided to uh, go all out with it and build a new frame for it. I have a lot of ideas the way I want this car to come out. And Ian's creative mind, I'm sure he's got a lot more different ideas as well. So this is going to be interesting on this project. There's a show coming up. I just want to go see what's around, get some inspiration, and start this new project. The Ventura Nationals has gone through a couple different transitions. It used to be called the Primer Nationals, but the Primer cars have evolved into, like, you'll see, full custom blowout. This show is happening. Looking at other 31 Fords, uh, this is like straight, cool, traditional custom. This is a lot like Don's in that it's a high boy. It's on the stock frame. Uh, it's running a Chevy V8 motor. It's just, you know, this is a really clean car. It's the way you would see it done in the 50s or 60s. And it's just a bitchin' look. The way they got the paint set up, it looks kind of old and patinaed. But this is, this is a real hot rod, good stuff. 
Uh, it's the same year. It's a 31 Ford. It's unchopped. It's a high boy. It's up on top of the frame. Uh, this one I consider even more traditional. It has the wishbones, but they haven't been split, so it sits taller. It's got a flathead V8 motor in it. It's total, totally legit hot rod. It's the real deal. The exhaust on this car is bitching. I really like it. It makes a mess, but it looks awesome. It seems like everything with hot rods has been done. I'm always trying to break new ground, but I see these traditional cars that are pretty mellow, and they're damn nice. Kind of on the fence. I know where I want to go, but sometimes you just got to hold back. We really started this project about a year ago. I built a whole frame for it, and we haven't done anything since. I made the whole front clip look like a stock car. That's when the debate really started. I wanted to lengthen it out about eight inches just so we'd have more room in the cab of the car. I'm trying to build it as comfortable as I can. The problem with extending the wheelbase is it's not that Model A hot rod that you see on the lakes in the 50s. Those cars were running a stock wheelbase most of the time, and that's the look. But I was going for more of the practical look, had to make it comfortable. Don really wanted room in the footwell, so we ended up making the chassis six inches longer. For the rear part of the frame, I used two by three, one eighth wall, and I used the Model A frame as a template where I put this little jog in it. And I just set that up and took the two by six just made a join and then plated them with a quarter inch plate on the outside all the way around. We don't have a proper hot rod front axle, so I'm looking for something that looks like it. Don's got a 59 Ford truck in the back, and I think I can modify that to work. Since we need a front axle for the 31, uh, I did this on another car, like a T-bucket I built. I used a truck axle, so it's cool because these straight axles, they have uh, hydraulic brakes. They got the old school wide five bolt pattern. The cool thing about this axle is Don's already got it. It's here, it's got a great brake setup. A lot of guys would convert their cars to truck brakes. And really that's the main benefit. I'm just using the whole axle, but it's all about stopping. It's a no brainer. I'm just gonna cut off the leaf spring mounts and create a new mount for the hot rod style spring. All right, so that's the deal. The main thing I'm gonna have to do before I start, see these pads where the old leaf springs used to mount? I'm gonna cut straight through and then weld a bracket on to hold the new radius rods. I'm cutting off the brackets that held the parallel leaf springs. That's the way the 59 truck was set up, but I want a transverse leaf spring. I'm making new mounts to hold this new style spring. It's pretty straight ahead, it's just gotta be really strong. I'm making a setup so that it holds the radius rods and the spring. So it's really just a bunch of quarter inch plate. It's basically just a big steel gusset structure that locates the axle. That's all. That's what I do, man. Just using what's available. Anybody can get in the catalog and pick a number, but I'm making it. This axle's done. I painted it black. It's a very simple thing. Just a bunch of bolts at this point, and it's ready to roll. Don ordered the radius rods from the catalog. I don't have a problem with ordering from the catalog. I'm trying to make his job a little bit easier. Don had the rear end he wants to use. So I put on some brackets, hooked up the four link kit. Now we got a rolling chassis. Once I saw the body on the chassis, all I could think was chop top. Don's hesitant. Found this Chevy truck steering box, mounted it to the frame. It's going to work great. The challenge is mating it up to the forward front axle. They're different ends on the drag link. With every car I've made like this, I've had to make a custom length drag link. So when you put the end on, you just use the Chevy on one side and the Ford on the other.
With all the stuff that I have around here, Ian uh, really has never asked me to go buy anything for a project. I really like using stuff that's around. There's sometimes you can't get away from ordering parts, pushings, heim joints, that type of thing. But I really just like to find stuff and modify it to fit what we're doing. I think that's the whole thing about being a fabricator. Instead of a restoration-minded person, I'm looking for stuff that I can use, cut it apart, and make it happen. Somebody who's restoring a car is looking for the proper thing that bolts back on. Now that it rolls and steers, there's a few other mechanical things I gotta wrap up and then get on to the aesthetics. So the engine and transmission are basically out of a 67 Mustang. So we're using the same radiator. I built a simple angle iron frame to support it. And it's gonna get held on with two bolts to the frame like the stock one. And then it'll just have two locating rods to keep it upright that hit the cowl. This is pretty rad. It's a 32 Ford. It's a reproduction grill shell. All right, we're still waiting to figure out what we do about the insert, but that's pretty much the setup. Uh, the next step is to mount the headlights and then create some kind of a shock bracket. Typical setup on the Model A hot rod is the headlight mounts have an integral shock mount. It's another thing you could order from the catalog, but I'm trying to make this car Don's. Put as many unique things in it as you can, so I'm just gonna make them. Make them out of some quarter-inch steel plate, and really, it's a no-brainer. The whole thing about this setup is strength. Those headlights are nice. You don't want them falling off. So the shock absorber is gonna be pushing and pulling on the headlight mount. It's gotta look cool. It's gotta be super strong. You can't mess with these headlights. Polished stainless steel with the cool little lights on top. Money, it's good stuff. This body is 80, 90, whatever years old. It's super old. We had to take it and do a bunch of work underneath. We got replacement wheel arches, a couple of replacement quarters, and it's really just cut and weld. Body work, sand, sand, sand. We finally get the thing pretty dialed in. It's time to see how it looks as a roller. Don's got the treasure. He's got this Chevy truck steering box, but it ain't gonna work. The stock truck steering box is just one long rod. It's a straight shot from the steering wheel to the box. The Model A is way smaller, so we gotta bend it a bit. Took the steering shaft, cut it a few times, put in two universal joints and a couple mounts. There you have it. It's a bent steering rod and it works perfect. The whole deal is getting the steering wheel in a comfortable position to drive. The steering box is pretty far off from where it would have been in the stock location. The car's lower, so we had to modify the steering shaft. Getting the steering column together was pretty important. You can research or think about anything as much as you want, but the proof is in the test, and it works great. Once I saw the body on the chassis, all I could think was chop top, but Don's hesitant. This car is an all original, it's an all steel car. I would like to keep it looking as much like an original car as I can. That's why I'm really dragging my feet on chopping the top on this one. In the end, Don's looking for a comfortable driving car, so no chop top. I'm just trying to help Don build his car. Finally, I can do something inspiring on a very conservative build, which is like my release valve. <laughs> Every Model A has a hole in the roof. Can't get around it. One of the cool factors is it really gives you an opportunity to kind of make your mark. I've been looking around all over, trying to figure out what's gonna be cool. Don's got a bunch of van roofs. Uh, he's got car hoods, car trunks, all kinds of stuff. Looking around, I come up on this Mustang hood and it's pretty thrashed. This is a 69 Mustang hood. The uh, car got wrecked. I cut it out about the same size as the roof opening in the Model A. It's got a neat crease down the center, and it's worthless as a replacement hood. So we were talking about using it to fill the hole in the roof. The contour fits, and it's got this cool little detail in the, in the roof. 
The selling point to me was the ridge in the hood. The ridge in the hood immediately made me think of a 50s trick where they would put these little air vents in the roof of the car. So that's really what I was hoping to do. I mean, I already had this thing built in my head. I'm not really sure about the scoop Ian's talking about on the back. I'm, you know, more leaning towards an original stock car. But as creative as Ian is, you have to step back. He's so creative. I mean, there's times I sit and go, OK, Ian, what are you thinking about? Because he's picking up the strangest part to pick up and put on my car. It's just, it amazes me that you never know where he's going to go with something. So I'll probably mellow out these two side ridges a little bit, and they'll just have a center peak right through the hood. Like, I can finally get creative on a very conservative build, which is like my, my release valve. <laughs> Finally, I can do something inspiring. The whole deal with this roof insert is the car can buckle. This is a pretty structural point, so I'm having to clean out all the old crud. The whole deal is just grinding all the edges, getting it super clean so we can mate the sheet metal up, and it's a good, strong weld. Because if this car goes in a driveway or something, gets some torsional twists, the roof is going to pop up. It's really important that this is strong, so we're setting it up so it's really strong. This is a huge sheet metal panel, and I don't want to warp it. There's a million ways to jig it up, but I found that tech screws, just screwing it down every few inches, works perfect. So that's the plan. Just screw it down. We'll come back and fill up the holes later with weld. Pretty much it. I'll just weld this on. It's going to take a long time to make all the tack welds. It's about 16 linear feet of welding, so stand by. It's all screwed together, and there's no warps or kinks, so it's going to be a slow welding process, round and round, for hours. It takes so long to spot weld a big panel like this. I mean, your thoughts can go anywhere, but mostly for me, it's like the sound of a long, empty hallway with a slight breeze coming through it. It's just nothing. <laughs> you can't think too much when you're doing this, or you go crazy. It takes a long time. The satisfaction comes in the end result, because a lot of guys will want to work through it too fast, and I know what happens. I've been there. So really, I've trained myself to just slow down time. Just take your time and do it right. It's not that hard to weld this on correctly. And the whole deal is not heating it up. And if you do heat it up, you got to know how to recover from it. And that's really where the hammer welding comes in. Each time the weld cools down, it shrinks a bit. So. Nothing's perfect. Some spot welds will be hotter than others. So if you find that it's starting an oil can on you, it gets out of shape, you got to hammer it back before you do the next weld. It's really just keeping the metal under control. It's just a slow process. You got to do it right. Once the welding's all done, you just grind it out. It's the same deal that you don't want to heat it up, because you can warp it when you're grinding it. So you got to know where you're going. Just take your time and get it right. When I'm grinding it, I'm just making sure I don't heat it up. I try to keep the edge of the disc on the weld. Never hit the sheet metal. It's really just, you got to pay attention. Last part of the equation is the Bondo. Mix it up, fill it, go on to primer. The whole purpose of the Bondo is to level the surface. So you mix it up, spread it, cut it back real fast. Get as much of the material off as possible, because you want the paint to be as close to the metal as possible. The whole idea with Bondo is using as little as possible. So I like to work fast. I found that I can use this big old saw blade, and it's like 10 grit sandpaper. So if you use it right, it goes really quick. You just sling off the high spots real fast, just go to 36 grit after that. Don's car is bitching and all, but it's really not the creative entity that I am looking for. It's like. This is like work, you know? I'm at work here. I'm trying to make a really bitching car, but I got to get back to my shop. There's something I've been looking to finish, and I got to get to it. Working on Don's hot rod has got me thinking about this car I built about five years ago. It's a total show car. It just had some suspension issues, and it's really making me want to bring it back. Working on Don's hot rod has got me thinking about this car I built about five years ago. It's a total show car. It just had some suspension issues, and it's really making me want to bring it back. I took the whole car apart to freshen it up, and what I'm going to really do is make the suspension work. There's a few really cool ideas, but without the final touches, it's pretty much unusable. This is the freaking mess. It's a pretty nonsensical car. 
This is the bare frame. The motor and transmission are in it because it's so high fashion, it requires a ton of disassembly to get the engine out. So today, I just got to come up with a plan. When I originally built the car, I had taken two airbags and stacked one on top of the other so they would blow up like an accordion. They were huge. So the airbags, you can see what I did. I just hogged out the threads on this so they just located. So they would fit together like that, a double stack. But the problem was with the arc of the suspension, they would literally turn into a noodle. And if the axle twisted, then they would come apart. They would, they would pop out of the car. So this bag would be here, and then it would just literally break free. The worst thing was that the car could barely even get on the trailer. Even as a trailer queen, it couldn't do that one simple task. The cool factor is it looks like a toy. It looks fake. It was a super simple design. The two link is okay, but it needs a third. It needs something to stop it from going left to right. The whole deal with this modification is I do have to put in suspension components and basically busy up the design a little. I'm trying to make it look as cool as it did in the beginning, but without these extra parts, it just doesn't work. My challenge is to make it look as cool as possible and still drive. What I had established, obviously you got plenty of up and down movement. You got articulation in the axle, but I need to stop it from going side to side. So the fix is a third link, some kind of a rod with a joint that as the suspension moves up and down, it swings with it, but it stops it from moving side to side. That's the fix. I might put shocks just inside here. This is all hidden. It might come off with shocks on each side like that. That way it'll give it a little help when it articulates and rises and falls. This is still a show car. It doesn't need to drive across town. It's got no VIN numbers. It's got no license plates. It's not an off-road vehicle. It just needs to get on the trailer. <laughs> I need to get it out of the storage and back to the show. Goal today is to get this thing to have shocks and a third link in the suspension. I was able to get a couple shocks Volkswagen front shocks from an early, like, 60s bug. Uh, I figured they would, they were gas charged, so this isn't a performance car. These were around, and I'm gonna make them fit, even if they wouldn't otherwise. Went digging around in my friend Don's back lot. I was able to come up with an old tie rod from a car. I always like to put a little Volkswagen in every project. I'm using VW front shocks, and I found this tie rod at Don's. I'm gonna make into a third link for the suspension. Uh, I just cut one end off. I have to cut it to length, but I think this will work perfect for the cross link. I'll have to come up with a couple mounts and mount this crossways in here so that as the suspension travels up and down, it won't go side to side. The first step today is to create an upper shock mount. I'm really trying to make this thing look like it belongs on the car and not an afterthought. So it's got to be strong and it's got to look as cool as the rest of the vehicle. I've really been tossing around a few ideas on how to build this thing. What I really know is that I don't want to grind on the frame. I don't want to disturb the paintwork that's there. So I'm trying to come up with a creative idea that'll bolt on. What this needs to do for functionality is locate the upper bushing on the shocks. I got a whole bunch of this, it looks like one by three or so rectangular tube. So if that sits on here, then once the shock is collapsed, it comes out to just about the right measurement. So if I set that up like that with a bolt going through, that should work perfect. They're gas charged, they gotta be really secure. It's got to be a strong part, and it's got to look cool. I'm trying to make this thing look like it belongs on the car, and I've got drilled holes all over the thing. Some are dimpled, some are all the way through, so probably going to come up with some kind of a thing that matches parts of the suspension. I just cut an 11-inch piece of that 1 by 3 rectangular stock, drilled a bunch of holes. It took a while. I left the ends without holes because I'm going to put two small pieces of tube so I can put a bolt through it. I used a TIG welder to fit the bushings on the end of this rectangular bar. I did that primarily so it's a really neat weld, simple, minimal. There's no finish work. It just looks cool. 
The whole concept with this from the beginning was to make it look like it wouldn't work. So I'm still trying to keep all these functioning parts kind of minimalistic standpoint. When you look at the car, I don't want you to see a bunch of accessories bolted on. I'm trying to keep it low key. All right, so that worked out good. But the shocks, I think I'm gonna trim these shocks a little bit because they just, that looks too stock. So this whole upper shock looks pretty bulky and you don't really need this. This is just like a shield for a street car. You'll see what the deal is. I'll just cut this whole top off and it'll look pretty clean. The whole idea is this being a show car, I want you to look at the flashy stuff. This isn't a focal point, this is purely function. Taking these upper shrouds off of the shock, just because it makes them look a little lighter, a little cooler, you got a nice shiny chrome rod coming out of it, it just looks cooler. They put these shrouds on it for cars on the street, keeps water, rocks, any kind of crud out of the moving part. But this doesn't have that. This car's never gonna be in the rain or in the mud, so no crud's gonna go down into the shock absorber. So it was primarily for looks. It looks, looks bitching. The primary difference in the setup between Don's and my car is I'm using an airbag system. They both have a center mount, but his leaf spring is the thing that locates the axle and keeps it centered. My design for the airbag doesn't have anything to keep the axle centered, so I need to put this third link in. That'll keep it from self-destructing. The whole idea with this being on airbags is it's got a function. It's got to move up and down pretty quickly. It's got to look cool and be strong. Everything seems to be working, but you never know what could go wrong. I mean, this is a, a raw chassis. Everything seems to be operating, but I'll, I'll never know until I get the thing assembled. So we'll see. Spent a bunch of time getting some stuff done on my car, and that's cool. But really, I love to finish projects. Don's car is so close, it's good to get back here. I'm really looking forward to driving the thing. It's great to have Ian back. While he was gone, I was finishing up on running the brake lines, the fuel lines, some of the electrical that's going into the car. And now that he's here, now we can get down to business on getting that thing closer to being fired up. Mechanically, Don's got down on all the hoses, wires, uh, brake lines, emergency brake cable. Everything mechanical is complete. Bolting in the drive shaft and modifying the rear four link are the last two things. And mechanically, it's there. Cool factor times 10. We got some coker tires, installed some radial white walls, 165s in the front, 235s in the back. It's got the classic big and little hot rod look. The diameter of the rear tires looks great. The frame has got the proportions I like. You gotta see it with the body on. That's what makes it all together. That's what makes it count. Well, the body's in good position. I gotta see what this thing looks like. Been waiting a long time. A lot of effort's gone into getting this far, so let's see what it looks like in the sunlight. I like it, sir. I like it, too. It's so nice to finally see this car going someplace. It's been sitting for 40-some-odd years. Now to see it getting so close, I'm so excited about getting that car running and getting it down the road. It is absolutely bitch, and I couldn't ask for a better car. You've seen this car kind of mocked up a hundred times already, but with the tires and the paint, this thing is ready. It's looking good. The last bit of fabrication is the exhaust dumps. Don's got a bitchin' set of headers, and they need mufflers. We're bolting on the headers, and I'm gonna fabricate the rest of the exhaust. Don got these old school glass packs. He wants to run them underneath the doors along the frame like that. It took a whole bunch of cut and welds, but it actually gave it a better shape in the end. I trimmed it back until it has this like flowing rearward kind of a, a mellow curvature. It looks good. That's pretty much the layout. I'm gonna take it off and finish weld it, sand it up nice. Uh, Don's gonna paint the whole assembly black. So the last bit is just to put a gasket on here. I'm not gonna put it together finally until we're really done, 
but this is the gist of it. So you got it and it's shut off. It flows out through the mufflers. So it's a two and a half outlet to a two inch end pipe and muffler. But if he goes out to the salt flats or just wants to annoy his neighbors, he can open it up. It'd be like a marching band coming down the street. Without mufflers, this car will be pretty rowdy. You know, it, everybody would know who's coming through town. Don's looking to be a little more discreet. He's a little more mature than I am. So we're ready to install this. And aftermarket air cleaner that looks just fantastic. Usually wiring a car for me is kind of tedious, but I'm gonna try out this wiring harness kit. It looks like it's all there. It's painless, so they say. And all the wires are labeled. Pretty slick. Cool factor number two, we got a wiring kit from Painless. It's a big hassle to come up and build your own wiring harness from a bare fuse block. So we got this kit and it has everything. The crazy thing about wiring harnesses is there's always a million wires. And this one is color coded. Each wire is labeled it's like a tiny little silk screen machine. I don't know how they do it. Every wire tells you what it goes to. So although it looks like a crazy bundle, they're all telling you what to do with them. It's really a time saver. And it's pro, you know it works. They got a great reputation. We're there. All we gotta do is button up a few things, start it, and run it. I'd say a significant event occurred in my absence. <laughs> Let's get outside. We're in the closing stages of this car. Don's project is just wrapping up. Today's the day we start it. It's all assembled pretty much just up to the accessories and then the start. Today's the day, it's all coming together. We're finally gonna fire this thing up and put it on the road. I am so excited about this. Gotta put the tail lights on, the deck lid, gotta put the seat in and the steering column. Pretty minor nuts and bolts. The only thing left to figure out is this third brake light. When Ian was gone, I went ahead and I got some LED lights. In my absence, the hood scoop, this great styling element, has become a third brake light. Very interesting. I like the practicality of the safety part of it, because the car sits fairly low, that I think that's going to work out really good. He wired some uh, wires up through the body, and he put these LEDs inside. In the end, it's all about craftsmanship. You know, that is a very custom third brake light. Our plan is to take an old tail light from a car and just cut that shape out. We talked about it, Don wanted a third brake light, and I said, there's no way you're putting one in the back window. So hiding it in the hood scoop was a better choice. The first step was to cut out this shape from the whole lens. We only need a small piece of red plastic, basically. just creeped up on it. First I cut it with like a heavy cutting disc and then I used a sander to just creep up on the final shape. I put a little bevel in it as it meets the body. It'll, it'll be like a 45 degree angle. So it'll sit right up against the flange that is in the body. We'll just glue in the seam with a little bit of silicone and just call that done. Oh, look at that, boy. Somebody will see me for miles away. Perfect. Another wonderful job by FM Ian. The final step of the whole freaking build. We're there. Don's gonna set up some tool to raise the oil pressure. The motor's been sitting for years, so Don needs to bring up the oil pressure and then rotate the engine a few times and get everything lubricated. I'm pretty stoked. Don turned the key and the thing popped right off. It fired right away. The compression and everything in the motor seems cool. It's firing fine, but it's not delivering fuel. Uh, I'm not sure what the deal is. It's pulling the fuel up out of the tank, but it's like it's sort of just pulsing. It's not really delivering the gas the way it should. For some reason, the gas isn't getting to the engine. Don's gonna set up something with a fuel pump or whatever, but I gotta take off. I gotta pick up a car and deliver it to another client. So I'm gonna come back in about an hour. Should wrap this up and we're gonna run this thing. You're ready to rock.
I'd say a significant event occurred in my absence. <laughs> This fire could have got out of control. Apparently there was too much fuel pressure and the whole engine seems to have caught on fire. The, uh, let's get outside. Yeah. What happened was the, um, the seat and the carburetor stuck open. <laughs> so it was pushing all the fuel out of the carburetor and I think there was a spark when I went to pull off the wire, and I think that's what ignited it. It takes a lot to get me excited. I'm a pretty mellow dude. So, you know, seeing a car that was freshly incinerated, it's, it's pretty, pretty exciting. <laughs> I can't say I was really disappointed, because it's exciting, you know? I'm into that kind of stuff. It's a bummer. The car's filthy now, but pretty cool. Not everybody catches their brand new car on fire. It's not going to run tonight. Um... It will run. It will make it to the show. It's just going to take cleanup time now. Yeah, well, nothing's of... burnt. It's no, just dirty. no, no, no. It's very minor damage. Well, apparently getting gas isn't the problem now. It seems to get plenty of fuel. <laughs> so I think we solved that problem. I guess all we got to do is wash it up and run it. It's running. It's ready to go. Going to the show. Well, I had to clean up the mess after the fire, and uh, that took a, that was a little challenging. But we got all the uh, powder off of the car. Uh, have not fixed one burnt wire yet, but that'll get fixed later on. And uh, adjusted the timing on it, and uh, it's good to go. I'm really happy with the way this whole build went because it's. The car is easy to get in and out of. It's a nice car to drive. It handles well, it corners well, it stops well, and the wife can get in and out of it well. I'm just so tickled. I mean, I couldn't have asked for anything more or a person that Ian's caliber to, to help me with my own personal project. Working with Ian, he has taught me that you can make things absolutely bitchin' with the simplest tools, the simple material that you can take something and make the most awesome stuff with it. That I have learned from him. I really appreciate that. What was it, a two-door sedan or a four-door? Oh, and you shortened it up? Everything, yeah. Oh, what a car. I've never seen nothing like that in my life. Yeah, this is assembling it for the first time. It's still kind of a mock-up. I don't know if it's actually gonna work, but I got a pretty good idea, so we'll see. This car is really kind of the opposite of what Don's is. His is for the street, this is for the show. It's high fashion. All it does is get off the trailer, show up at the club, and do its dance. It has no other purpose except to get attention. The hardest part about this is that this is a finished, pristine show car. Not like a mock-up. So I'm really trying to be careful. I want to assemble it, polish it, and show it. I got my car put all back together. The front suspension works great. I got it on the trailer and it's off to the rodeo. Really excited, fires out, car runs, and we're here. Very happy. I've had a lot of good reaction. The family just loves it. They can't wait to go for rides in it. Seeing Don happy with the car, excited to drive it, I mean, that's what it's all about. Working with people and getting that type of response 
makes it happen for me. Guess what kind of engine? Like Pontiac, Oldsmobile? Oldsmobile. Okay. 48, <laughs> yeah. yeah. How does it go? Uh, drives like a jalopy. It's yeah? Like a, it's like a, it's it's like got an, some poop? It's like an angry little go-kart. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. that like about a 38 bone body? Uh, it's a Chevy. Oh, it's a Chevy. Yeah, it's a 31 Chevy. I'll be See all the extra lines yeah. in the body? Yeah. Well, what was it? A two-door sedan or a... It was a four-door. Oh, and you shortened it up? Everything, yeah. Yeah, I shortened it a little. I made it... The whole channel or chopped it, and chopped channeled it, it, channeled it, sectioned, it, sectioned it. it, and painted the mother pink. Well, what a car! I've never seen nothing like that in my life. I've been around for 77 years. Right on. That's cool. To finally, finish this monumental task and have people stoked on it is really rewarding. You know, I built the car for me, but the people like it.